What's going on, YouTube? It's James with Shimer Fantasy Battle Reports, and I got the final battle of Hogfist 2018, round number five. Guys, how have you been? How has my YouTube viewership been? Guys, uh, this is the last game, like I just promised, from Hogfest. I know it's been over six months for me to get any of these, all these videos out. And you know what? I thank you for your extreme patience. Um, not that you being impatient would have changed me not recording them faster or slower. But you know what I mean. Anyways, uh, guys, I got a game here against Mr. Justin Berge. Now I'm going to go over this just a little bit in advance. I'm not doing so damn hot. In this <laughs> in this tournament, Justin Berge's in the top table in the most amount of points. I even made a big stink about it as we're playing, and these two guys over here should be in number two and number three. Um, I believe Berge hasn't fought Schweitzer or Berge hasn't fought Mike, one of those two. But I don't understand why they're not playing, and you know, it didn't make sense to me why I should be like. I'm doing okay. I got a big win against uh, Ben Kerr in the last game, but I had a couple like average games and like close losses, like 12 nines and 11 or 12 eights and 11 nines. So I should be in the middle tables. I should be fighting. I think I I didn't want to fight Mike Lies anyways. I think Mike Lies would have killed me. But um, I, there should definitely be somebody else I'm playing. But that being said, my little rants aside, <clears throat> Mike offers me a hundred dollars to play Justin. If I could beat Justin with a 20 and 0 and give him the opportunity to steal a win and win the whole tournament. So there it is. There's the $100 that Mike Lies has offered. Here's Mr. Justin Berge making fun of me for the fact that I shouldn't even be at this table. Um, <laughs> let's go over what he has. Let's go over what I have. And I'm going to give you a hell of a game, guys. I'm not going to go down swinging like a chump. Um, so, uh, here's the magic, and I can't even see it all, because you know what, first off, he has all this fucking magic as a, uh, highborn elf player. He has, uh, the one where he gets all the level 1 spells, or something like that, and, uh, he ends up taking Oaken Throne as well, and he has that one wizard that, even though he casts another spell from another lore, he still gets Oaken Throne, or, um, the Druidism attribute to go off. Um, as you can see, this is how we play on the table. Now we're playing uh, the the three points. What is that called? Um, secure? No, not secure target. It's the one where like the treasure. I don't know what it is. The one where you grab the uh, the token and you hold on to it with a unit that's you know scoring. Blah blah blah. Whatever, right? Now, as you can see, he has a very defensive list. He has he has a very well-rounded list, might I add. Um, and uh, he deployed he uh, center heavy. The unit in the center is a block of Phoenix Guard. that are hard to kill. Uh, has its general in it. The general has, like, the Spear of the Blazing Dawn or whatever it's called. And it's a fucking brutal weapon uh, to get into fight with. Because he's going first, basically. There's not many things that can go faster than him. And he will kick your ass with it. Um, he has two spells that could boost his strength as well. So that's something to take note of. Uh, the two units on the side are just Spear Blocks. But they do have the Charging Rima Banner. Uh, so if they charge in, they're going to have extra strength. Uh, and behind the unit of... Um, of Phoenix Guard, he has a unit of uh, bitches with bows, the Queen's Guard. Now, the Queen's Guard does have the Mage in that unit, uh, and I think the Mage is the BSB. I'm not sure entirely how that works. Uh, he has a small unit of archers hiding on the back right side, then he has three bolt throwers. Now, I let him deploy, he picks sides, and he picked that side. So, I got this side over here with the hill, and I already know how this goes. The bolt throwers just kill my general, the general causes a massive panic. So, I decided to hide my general behind the hill. Not only that, but I decided to limit his his damage potential by putting my units uh, uh, majority behind the hill or in the forest or behind other ends. I let him deploy first, basically, and I put all my shit out of range. Um, we're playing, I want to say it was marching columns. So I started on the right side with my dogs, and I put my savages there, and I put my iron rocks there, and I watched where he deployed, and as he deployed, um, he kind of deployed it where everything is where you see it now, and I just decided to hide all my characters and let my spider go off on the right side. He does have one chariot on the right side, which isn't too much of an issue um, for me. I know it's an issue for other people because they don't realize how fast that motherfucker is. Um, and I put my spider all the way on the far left side. Basically, that one, sh that one I want to get around the flank and get in there and do what it needs to do um the right one is more important excuse me 
<clears throat> to keep alive because that one's my, my wizard. Uh, for turn one, he's going to take turn one. Turn one! Highborn Elves. And here's Koopa giving me some good luck, hopefully. Um, he basically just kind of rearranges his army. He basically realizes I'm trying to pincer him. So he starts to get, get himself in a more defensive position. He takes the freaking wall, which is going to play a, a, a part later. Um, looking back at this picture, I'm pretty sure that's not how the wall was <laughs> supposed to be on the, on the table. But it's fine. Um, now... Uh, I go ahead and I vanguard my dogs behind my savages. I'm not going to let them just kill my dogs for free, which he probably will eventually. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm playing extremely defensively. He could take the damn tokens and walk away with it if he wants. This is how he looks, though. Uh, Magic ends up getting a 5 on the flux. Goes ahead and he throws up Oaken Throne. This is before I realize he can actually just keep throwing up uh, the attribute onto anything. He gives these guys uh, a plus 1 ballistic skill so they can just start shooting better. And then he goes ahead and gives these guys something else to probably boost his strength or something like that. I don't remember what it was. These fucking bitches with bows start shooting, and I mean they start shooting, but they get all, they're having a hard time hitting just because of the damn trees. He ends up killing only about three savage orcs here. These bolt throwers are going to start shooting into my chariots. They end up doing one wound. Now the chariots are hiding majority behind the hill as well, so he's not doing that great on accuracy. These two bolt throwers are going to start shooting into my iron orcs. They only kill up one. And he's immediately saying, damn it, Silva, I gave you the better fucking hiding potential. Didn't realize. He's like, I thought you were going to come at me. And uh, I'm just like, ah, I'm not going to get shot turn one. Fuck this. Turn one. Orcs and goblins. Orcs and goblins turn one. I go ahead and I move my orcs up the off the wall. Or up the hill, sorry. And I decided to move my, uh, just start to pincer in. I didn't move my savages out of uh, range of the forest yet. There's still majority in the forest because there's no point in me walking past the forest if I don't have to at the moment, which I don't. Um, I just want to offer threat ranges. Um, I want to start pincering. Uh, I... The one thing is I did move my spider a little too far on the left, so I needed to move up faster, and that spider didn't get range. Uh, my shaman doesn't, my orc shaman doesn't need to ever come out really in this position. Uh, my general just needs to keep a leadership bubble, and that's the one thing I'm making sure that he reaches everything and doesn't give up getting shot. Magic! I got a six on the flux. Go ahead and I do a hand of heaven onto one of the bolt throwers. Only does one wound, though, unfortunately, and that's all that really happens. Everything's out of range of shooting. So start off his turn. Turn two, highborn. Elves, Bergy Elves, turn two. Um, and as you can see, he kind of just, again, just shimmies around. He's really not committing to anything. He's just going to start shooting and picking my, my wounds off. And that's what he really wants to do. Um, so uh, that's basically how it looks. Magic hands up getting a four on the flux. Goes ahead and he does Oka throwing on these guys because I think I dispelled it on my turn. Now, I dispelled it on my turn. This is one of the things that happened. Uh, and I'm, I don't, I'll clarify what happens here so that way you understand the full context of the story. Um, I ended up getting uh, six on the flux. I'll show you back my pictures. I got six on the flux, so I got six magic dice. I got uh, five tokens. I do have one master, and I think at this time I was taking the extra item that gives me an extra token, right? So I ended up giving like seven dice. Now, most of the shit he has is out of range. So I throw a hand of heaven down onto that one guy, which was only two dice that got it off, right? As I threw the hand of heaven down, I still have like five dice left or six dice left or something like that, right? I said, shit, I meant to spend one dice on Oak and Throne to dispel his Oak and Throne. He goes, uh, I'll let you have it. And I was like, at first he was kind of like, well, you already threw your first spell. And I go, you know what, Berkey? Yes, but uh, truthfully, it's one dice. It's not going to make a difference from this spell that went off. Um, and I, I honestly, it was an honest mistake, right? So he lets me go ahead and do it. That, that'll come back later. In the future story. Anyways, so he redoes Oak and Throne. He goes ahead and he does uh, Guiding Light and starts killing off more Iron Orcs. Uh, these guys are going to start shooting into me, and holy shit. <laughs> holy shit, did he, he whiff. Um, or is it five ones? Is this the spell or the shots? I think it might have been the shots. Again, this has been like six months since the last time I seen it. Anyways. Or, I think this is my, actually, my ward saves. You got five wounds off, and I go ahead and I do the ward saves, and I get fucking five ones. What's it? Yahtzee! But it was just fucking nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and lose five savages. Um, over here, I'm going to start, he's going to start shooting with his bolt throwers uh, into my iron orcs. He ends up killing off a couple more iron orcs, and then these bitches with bows are going to continue shooting into my chariots. They end up killing off one of my chariots. This bolt thrower is going to shoot into my chariots. Does a couple more wounds. Going to start off turn two orcs and goblins. Turn two orcs and goblins. 
I go ahead and I move my spider up aggressively on the left. I'm figuring, you know what? I can handle some fucking uh, spearmen. I can handle some uh, the bolt throwers. Bolt throwers aren't going to kill my spider on the left fully health, basically. That's just the truth to it. Um, so I just go ahead and move aggressively on the left. On the right, my spider kind of moves up aggressively. There was a huge um, thing where he could see my spider, and even though it's a front charge, he could charge past the building and turn. So I ended up having to do it where I put my spider where it's just looking at the damn building and doesn't give him a charge with that spear block. All right, uh, Magic, I got eight on the flux, and I go ahead and I do a hand to heaven, go ahead and I blow up the one bolt thrower uh, here, right? Or did I leave it with one? I think I blew it up. Uh, and that's all that really happened with Magic. I think I tried to throw it on a comet, he stopped it, or he binding scrolled it, whatever. Um, over here, this chariot's going to start shooting wounds into the, the bitches of bows, get a wound off. These guys are going to start shooting into the uh, whatever I can reach, which everything's hiding behind walls, so it really doesn't matter. I think I shot like one highborn elf off. And that's all that really happens. Gonna start off turn three highborn elves. Turn three highborn elves. Um, he realizes I'm just trying to get my my spider close in range to start doing like magic breaths and all whatever. So he just starts to move around, threaten my spider with a chariot. My fear with the chariot is even though it's a chump chariot, it's not a lion chariot. It's a fucking uh, horse chariot, right? The reaver chariot is if he gets the charge off, it's gonna hurt. If he wins. Even by one, which is not entirely unlikely, but it's possible. I'll I'll have to pass a leadership six stubborn check, which I'll lose that spider for something stupid. So that's really a, a threat. Uh, and if I let the chariot go by me, he's going to charge the chariot into my savages, which are in the trees, and I'm going to lose a unit because of something stupid. So I kind of have to like take care of that chariot on the right right now. Now he is planning to chaff with the eagle there, um, and he ends up chaffing with another eagle to my spider on the left, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, magic, he gets a three on the flux, goes ahead, puts up Oaken Throne again, he goes ahead and starts restoring wounds with stupid ass spells like fucking X plus one to shoot. Um, and he does healing waters on these guys because he doesn't want to lose his expensive bitches of bows unit. He shoots into it. looks like the chariots, and he just wipes the fucking chariots out, these fucking bitches. Uh, these guys with bows over here are going to start shooting into my savages, still only kill one. This guy's going to start shooting into my iron orcs, kills off one. And basically, that's how the table looks. It's going to start off turn three, orcs and goblins, orcs and goblins, turn three. Uh, my spider, I think, did I run around the, ch the eagle? Did I charge the eagle? I want to say I charged the eagle. Maybe not. Not entirely sure what I did with the eagle. I think no. I think I, I walked away from the eagle and I walked behind the hill so he doesn't charge me with his spear block. Um, again, I don't know why I was so scared of the spear block. He, even if he charges him, the, the 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 thing that I was worried about here here's the truth is if he charges me with the spear block, he has the banner of Rima, which should only put him at strength four, which doesn't matter to the spider. But he has two spells that give him plus one strength, and if he gets those off on the spider, he'll actually win the combat against the spider, uh, because they'll, they'll start wounding on fives, and it's just a lot of accurate hits. They're hitting me on twos, wounding me on fives. Um, so that's one thing, and I really just want to take out the bolt thrower on the left so my general could get out of the, the bubble. Um, anyways, uh, where's my pictures? I lost my pictures. No! Let's see, this was turn three. One second. I, I went out of order, and all of a sudden, boom, I lost where I was. Okay, it was this one, then it's over here. Magic Magic ends up getting a Hand of Heaven off uh, on the Chariot, ends up blowing the Chariot up, uh, which is just great. Uh, as you can see, I had to move the Spider back because he's about to charge me with the Spear Block, so I had to just kind of get out of range, but I failed the March check, so I only got to move six inches, and that's basically where I went. Um, over here, I'm going to start shooting into his Eagle with the Goblins, and they end up killing the Eagle, which is fucking great because I didn't want him to chaff me again. Um, and it's going to start off turn four. Turn four... Highborn elves. He decided, oh shit, the I gotta get the objective. So he goes ahead and he pushes up in my face. And this is a very smart move by him. And this is where one of the issues becomes uh, later on, which is he's looking at it with the ironworks and goblins. They cannot handle that unit. They cannot handle that Phoenix Guard unit as is, right? Um, so. He's alright, like, he's like, fuck it, I'm gonna go in your face, and I'm gonna challenge, I'm gonna just challenge your Iron Rooks to come at me, come at me, you know, and I'm looking at it like, I'm gonna lose, I just, he, he already took out my back rows, I'm not gonna get extra fight in extra ranks because he's gonna kill my back ranks, I'm only gonna get, like, 
even if I go extra hand weapons, I'm only going to get about, like, maybe 10 to 12 attacks. Maybe, after he wipes out my last two rows back there. So I'm like, shit, and the thing is, I cannot flee. I do have my chaff behind me, but that's, it's iffy. What if he kills my chaff? He's going to kill my chaff. He's going to shoot me with those fucking uh, bitches of bows or bolt throwers or something like that, or magic, or whatever he's going to do. But here's the one thing, and he, he this is basically how he he finished, right? Is my Iron Orcs can charge past his Phoenix Guard into the flank of his Spearmen. Now, I see this. I don't know if he necessarily saw it first. He did see it eventually, but he didn't see it here. And he actually ended up playing this game where he walks past the building, he goes forward, he goes back, he goes forward, he goes back, and he moves, you know, several times, which is fine because it's still within his movement range and he's trying to figure out exactly where he wants to be and he, where he ends up deciding to be is basically here he's worried about giving up a flank to my savages which i totally understand but he didn't see that he was giving up a flank to his spearmen with my black orcs even if it was one or two units i could charge past them and it basically wins me the game because i could take the objective and get the fuck out of there right um so uh magic goes magic goes into, uh he gets six on the flux Goes ahead and he does ice and fire onto my savages. Kills off five savages. Uh, goes ahead and he gives these guys all the buffs again. Perception of strength. Uh, awaken the beast. And guys, there's a shy ambulance. And at this point, I don't care if he's buffing these guys because I'm not going to charge him. And that's the moment he noticed he fucked up. And he was just like, ah, shit. And he goes, so uh, let's see if I can get a picture up. I'll get to there when I get there. Anyways, uh, shooting, he's going to start shooting these guys into the savages, kills off a couple more savages. He really fucked up my savages, which really hurts me. And, uh, yeah, it's going to start off turn four. Turn four, I'm going to show you this picture right here. Oh, no, wait, I have to go back to the old picture. Here. Where is it? Uh, you'll see it. Anyways, I'm going to go back to this picture here. All right, so he sees it after he buffs the guys, and he goes, oh, I meant to put them this far so you can't charge past me. And I was like, Bergie, we're already onto the shooting phase. Like, we're already two phases past this. And he goes, I let you take back the Oak and Throne. <laughs> I was like, it was a one dice thing that didn't matter. And if you said no, I would have been fine. He goes, yeah, but I let you go with that. You should let me go with this. And I was like, Bergie, I already saw. I saw where you did it. And I saw if you would have measured it and told me, yeah, this is where it should have been, I would have been okay with it. I would have been totally like, okay. I understand you're telling me I cannot charge past you because that's what it is, and I just deal with it. I was already trying to think about how I was going to deal with it like that anyways. Just lose the unit, chaff the unit, what am I going to have to do, right? But he wasn't doing that, and I was very aware of this. I was totally watching exactly what he was doing, so I was like, no, it really isn't. He was, he got so pissed, right? So then I go ahead, okay, it's my turn. Orcs and Goblins turn four, I'm going to call it the WOG, and I'm going to charge the flank of that Spearman un unit, and he goes, flee. <laughs> oh that sucked for me god damn it so he flees and i try to charge i believe the flank of his his unit there with the savages and i fail the charge which is a very shitty spot um basically puts me like this now i go ahead and i throw up the dogs uh, behind my iron orc so that way if he overruns or if he tries to if he kills him and tries to turn he's basically can't get to the flank of my my goblins that's why i put my dogs there uh so he just doesn't get the flank of my goblins which it doesn't really matter to be honest he could have killed both uh, my goblins are just going for that fucking um the token i think i might have moved my savages onto the token because i figured he fled i might have done this out of order uh Anyways, it really didn't matter. It really kind of puts me in a shitty spot because he, cause he fled, um, which is just a smart move by my opponent. And uh, unfortunately, it was under the circumstances it was, but it was a really smart play by Bergy. Um, uh, Magic, he ends up getting a, f or I end up getting a four on the flux. Go ahead and I do Smite the Unbeliever on these jabronis, and I end up shooting them with the Goblin Bow Shots. And look at that shit. I killed off six of them with Smite the Unbeliever and Bow Shots. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, over here, uh, I end up putting up the breath weapon on my on my champ, and I'm just gonna shoot a breath uh, onto that unit there. And I might have killed one or two. It doesn't even matter really. Um, it's gonna start off turn five. Turn five. 
this is how the table looks. Now, he's not going to charge my spider. And again, I don't know why my spider wasn't more aggressive. I should have been more aggressive with the spider. I should have had more faith in my spider. But uh, it was one of those games where I was just afraid of making mistakes against Bergy. And I think that, to me, in my head, I'm like, maybe I'm underestimating that little smear bin block against the spider. I shouldn't have. I, I've played this a hundred times with Dan when Dan was alive. Um, I should have just let the spider fight the damn spearman. I've, I, I know better. Um, anyways... He ends up charging here uh, into my Iron Orcs, which that we knew that was coming. Uh, and he ends up rallying the Spear Block, which puts me in a very shitty spot with the Spear Block, even though I got the objective there with the, the Savages. Uh, Magic, he ends up getting a 1 on the Flux. Can't really tell what he did on Magic. Here's, uh, he ends up doing Awaken the Beast here, which, okay. Uh, these bitches are going to start shooting to my Savages. They end up killing off more of my Savages. These guys just wipe my Iron Orcs out. Of course they will. Um, now... How does this work? Yeah. He ends up wiping out the orcs. The orcs are basically like five or six left. I end up only killing two of the Phoenix cards because he makes some ridiculous four board saves. And uh, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. I didn't probably like, I'm, I'm not shitting you. This is, and he could he could admit to it too. I did probably like maybe ten wounds. He made like eight ward saves. And not only then, but again later on when they get into more fights. Um, now he kills him. He decides to overrun to just wipe out my chaff as well. And he overruns and he fails to get into my dogs, which is huge, which is fucking huge. It's going to start off turn five, uh, orcs and goblins. Turn five, orcs and goblins. My savages are charging into a spear block that just rallied. Now, this could be huge. This could be bad. This could be whatever. I don't. I, I, I failed a frenzy check, so they had to charge, which he was like, oh, that's bad. And it really is bad. Um, and if I go for the bitches of bows, he's just going to stand and shoot, kill, him, kill off the rest, and it's a longer charge, so I might as well just go for the spear block. I tried to get his phoenix guard with my spider into the flank, right? Now, I don't have a picture of, did I get the charge? I think I did get the charge in. I think I did get the charge in. All right. Anyways, I think the spider connects, and I think the savages connect. We'll we'll find out in two minutes with the other pictures. Magic, I got a five on the flux. Go ahead, and I boost. Yeah, my spider got in, so I get cleansing fire off and awaken the beast off on my spider to buff the toughness of my spider because these guys are like strain five or six or some shit like that, right? Uh, these guys over here, my savages end up just taking out like a chunk of the freaking. Uh, not even a chunk. I'm sorry. They only take out two two fucking spears. I whiff on the fucking roll. I only kill off two, right? I take it back. I killed off four. But he ends up killing off five of my six remaining spear, uh, uh, savage orcs. Five. He said it. I said it. I knew what this fucking meant. He said, ooh, that's really bad. I really wish he killed that last guy. If he killed that last guy, he could not overrun because I charged him. But since I charged him and I only have one guy remaining and I'm going to lose combat, I run and it leaves him in better positioning over here, which is just ugly. Uh, my spider, on the other hand, he doesn't challenge. Um, I don't remember why he didn't challenge. And he ends up only putting a one wound on my spider. My spider ends up just fucking, fucking up a couple of his uh, guys. But I hold my breath weapon for the next turn or whatever it is. And it's going to start off turn six. Uh, Bergy turn six. Bergy turn six. This is where the game gets really good, guys. He charges into my savage. My savage runs and gets away over here, right? He's gonna redirect into the flank of my spider, <clears throat> which is a lot, a lot. I think he might have gave me uh, a champ last round. That's probably what happened. Um, so he's gonna charge into the, the flank of my spider. Now my spider is stubborn, which is fine. I don't care if he, all those bodies are in. I can still challenge out and deal with what I got to deal with. And I'm still tough seven right now. Uh, so he gets in like so. Boom. All right. <clears throat> this spearman block decides to uh, challenge a spider, which nothing happens there. Magic, he gets eight on the flux. Goes ahead and he does perception of strength on these guys, boosts their strength, right? This bolt thrower that's alive shoots down the last savage boar boy, or orc boy, which is fine because this guy's in my way. Now, if you noticed, I put my goblins facing the rear of his unit in ranks. So I have a deep goblin squad of 30 bodies there ready for the next turn i did this i thought ahead of this right these guys are going to start shooting into the goblins they end up taking off the back rank which totally understandable now he ends up putting up a, a challenge he declines he ends up putting three wounds onto the spider now he has a charge a flank a big flank three ranks three banners or two banners whatever he has a good fucking roll on my spider my spider 
beats the living shit. I mean, beats the living shit out of that spear block. Look at that. Holy shit. I think I did the breath weapon, the thunder stomp, all the attacks. And I beat the shit out of those spear block because... I didn't want to touch the fucking uh, Phoenix Guard. The Phoenix Guard have four boards. I might as well just kill the guys who I can kill and win this combat and hope I, he runs away. So, the Spear Block is going to run away. They fucking run away. Nobody takes that objective. That objective is lost, right? The fight in the front, though, they're going to stick because I, they're stubborn and... Or steadfast and stubborn, I think. No, just steadfast. And uh, it was just... That was just phenomenal by the by Chigo, the Chicken Rock, and it's gonna start off Orcs and Goblins turn six. Orcs and Goblins turn six. Holy shit! I charge my Goblins in the rear, my General in the flank. All right, I charge my Spider up on top into the Spear Block, and let's go into it. Magic, I got a seven on the Flux. Go ahead and I give them uh, reroll to hit his unit, uh, so that way basically he's going to um, everybody. Chigo, the goblins, my general, everybody's going to reroll a hit against this unit. Now, uh, so I go ahead and I do cleansing fire onto, I want to say I did it onto a shady git. Uh, anyways, we'll see how that plays out. Now, over here, this combat, I end up killing off like, I don't know, 15 of these guys, but it doesn't matter. He ends up holding a steadfast, and I'm not going to get the, anything out of that, which unfortunately, this just happened really late in the game it kind of happened late in the game because of him he kind of knew what he was doing to avoid getting in combat right away um over here this is the most ridiculous bullshit ever my initiative seven shady gets only kill two guys because he made a shit ton of ward saves right my impact hits with my general only does a wound or two he challenges now here was a major mistake by me here was a major major mistake he challenges with his general, and I accept with the spider, which I was trying to limit how many attacks he does on the spider. I was trying to limit how many attacks he does on the spider. So I figure if I'm not getting attacked by all the frontage of his guys into the spider, and I only take it with the general, uh, you know, spider might live. The problem was he does multi wounds. So he does five fucking wounds on the spider. I think it was the overkill I think he did <clears throat> I, I, the way I thought of it was the spider only had like three wounds left right so if he gets three it's fine but he ended up doing the three plus five I want to say that's how much it was so we'll just count it as that as for now and we'll, I'll figure out the math in a minute so I'm gonna put that eight for the spider right now as you can see my general the shady gets the goblins they fucking wiped out the back two ranks. The back two fucking ranks. So I have a charge, right? I have a fucking big rear, which is plus three. All right? I have at least two ranks, because I think he wiped out the last two ranks. We just didn't take the bodies. We just started counting with dice. I have, right there, you can see I have like 10, whatever. 10, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. 22 wounds? Is that right? It's pop. I think that might just be all the, the the combat res to begin with because I don't think he did 22 wounds backwards. Um, but he, I have a charge, a big rear, uh, two ranks at least, a banner, a flank, right? And then I have so many fucking wounds there. I have, uh, he looks like he's eight wide, so I have at least like, at least, I don't know, 12 wounds or so, I'm just going to assume, right? The problem here was, he has a rank. He fucking rolled out the box backwards, backwards into my unit and killed a shit ton of my unit, all right? And uh, he ended up getting that overkill on my spider, which was fucking huge. Instead of me just having a blowout, just instead of me just having this fucking unit, wiping it out with goblins and my general, it turned into me barely, and I mean barely winning combat. He lost combat by three. He lost combat by three. Now, he's not steadfast. I actually won the combat, right? And he's pincered. He can't go anywhere, right? But... He needs, he only has a one-time roll. He has no BSB. No BSB. I remember this. He has no BSB. He has a one-time roll 
of a 7 plus, or a 7 minus, right? If he could roll a 7 or under, he's going to win the game. I think the win would probably be like a 13-7, I want to say it was. Um, if not, he's going to lose this unit that's worth a shit ton of points with his general. I'm going to take the objective, and I'm going to win big. I'm going to win probably like 15-5 or something like that. It's going to be a huge swing. It's going to be a huge swing. The motherfucker, with his dice that roll four up, five up, six up, like no problem, rolls a fucking seven. Exactly a fucking seven. I am not shitty, you. What the fuck? You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. Oh my god. He admitted it the whole time, like, holy shit, James Silva's gonna beat me. Oh shit, James is gonna beat me. Oh god, James fucking set this up. He knew what he was doing. Shit, James is gonna beat me. James won, James won, James won. He rolls a fucking dice, he rolls a seven. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> it was a fun game. I actually thought it was a very tactical game. Uh, like I said, a major mistake was just not pushing my spider on the left faster because I could have got into the back lines, no problem. Um, but um, it just it it, it 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 is what it is. Um, this is my last game I have for Hogfest. Then I end up going to Masters, and Masters I don't do so hot, but um, I'm gonna still put those videos up anyways. Um, it, it, it basically this this game in Hogfest ended up in like I want to say it was like October, and Masters was like in February or January. So like a few months have passed. I didn't play any games in between those two. And it shows, more or less. Let's go over the winners and the losers. And uh, let's go over how everybody did. Uh, so for this is the lowest uh, point earner period uh, at the tournament. Basically, he gets the not the wooden spoon because the whole hog fest is bar barbecue themed. So he ended up getting a wooden spatula, more or less, uh, and some jam. I don't know what the jam is. Uh, but this is Ian. This is actually my boy Ian Holland. For, uh, he used to be a Chicago guy. He moved to St. Louis, and it was great to actually get a game or see him play. Uh, it was actually very invigorating because I, I used to play with this guy all the time. Him, Dan, uh, Aaron Marland, and uh, Todd, and Luke, and uh, and Red, you know, and my brother. And it's it's kind of sad because that group kind of dissipated, died, deported, and, and my brother stopped playing. So... Uh, Luke and Todd still play, but um, yeah, it was kind of good to see that uh, Ian was there. Um, and Ian brought up a very interesting point, um, and this is to everybody. This is to me. This is to everybody. Um, Ian told his wife, you know, oh, yeah, there's a tournament, but I don't think I'm going to go. And his wife said, why not? And he said, it's a dying game. He said, it's a dying game. Not many people are playing it anymore, blah, 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 blah. And she said to him, it's a dying game because people like you say it's a dying game. And she goes, if you want the game to succeed, you got to go and play. So he did. Even though he didn't do so hot, he came out and played. And that's a very interesting point. Uh, it's a very interesting perspective. Um, and it's it's funny that he, he listened to his wife like that. Um, for the best painted army, this went to, uh, or I think this might have been player's choice. I think it might have been. I want to say it's player's choice. If not, it's best painted. Uh, it goes to Corey Lenegar or Connor Lenegar. It's Corey. Corey Lenegar, right? The, da the dad. Cor I have them mixed up because they're both my friends on Facebook. One of them's dad, one of them's the son. So it's either Corey or Connor Lenegar. <laughs> um, as for, I want to say this is the best evil army. Was it? I can't even zoom in on that. Let me try to zoom in on my actual photo versus this photo here on here because I, I'm trying to see what it is. Ben Kerr, I don't know what you won, so I'm trying to see what you won really quick because I want to say, let's see, Mountain Mayhem, Hogfest, Mountain Mayhem, do, 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 do. Here's the picture of Ben. It's not going to help that I can zoom in this picture and it's going to say, like, best barbecue. <laughs> All right, come on. Computer's going slow. Probably because I'm recording at the same time I'm trying to pull up pictures. All right. Zoom. Oh, it's best, best sportsman. There you go. Ah, I did zoom in. <laughs> did not think that was going to work, and it did. <laughs> 
Uh, best sportsman goes to Ben Curry, and Ben Curry is an awesome guy. I played him, and I, I voted for him. He's one of the better uh, better sports I've ever played with, um, and he's definitely deserving of that award. Um, best evil army went to Mr. Euron Swaja. Euron Swaja took it with his vermin swarm. Euron Swaja is part of Team Mexico, and I know you're just saying, you're like, he doesn't look Mexican at all. Well, screw you. That's what I'm going to tell you. Anyways, uh, best neutral army went to me. Ha! Didn't even think I got that high. But apparently I did. I didn't even believe this. This is bullshit. Um, of course, I take my uh, mandatory selfie. I think there's a couple pictures floating me of me around. And I also look at my hair and think, God damn, i got to cut my hair because I'm looking more and more like freaking, uh, what's his name, uh, from the Wonder Years, Fred Savage. Um, best good army went to uh, Mr. Joel Flint. And honestly, I, I, he was playing Empire, so he got best good army. But for some reason, I got his award and he has mine. And whatever. It doesn't matter. We're both barbecue players. Um, over here, this was the top honor. The top award goes to... Mr. Justin Berge. Justin Berge won exactly the sword I won last year. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he won the whole thing, the whole shebang for Hogfest. And I believe this is actually second place or best uh, in points after Justin Berge goes to Jeremy Schweitzer, uh, which he got the axe. Uh, they did it backwards, basically, because they wanted Berge to choose his award uh, versus Schweitzer getting the award. But, anyways, um, I had a great time. This is my cousin Joey that lives out in... Um, that lives out in St. Louis and uh, let's go see him as well as just hang hung out with a couple of the guys and this is just a great time and um, it's just I don't know it was overall fun tournament it's one of the, it was the last tournament I went to in 2018 and uh, overall um, I know I've been out of it I'm planning on getting back into it um, I just feel to be honest that a lot a lot of people don't understand this or, or maybe they do understand this I don't know but um I get burned out it's just that it's a lot that I do all summer for the tournaments, for traveling, for everything. It costs a lot financially. It costs a lot uh, mentally, and um, and uh, you know, and I have a business to run as well. So it's kind of hard for me to get to everything and do everything that I do. Um, so it ends up burning me out mentally. And uh, usually for the for the winter, I just hibernate. <laughs> I realized that last year. Last year, I went on my shiatus, and you know, I was like, oh, I'm done with this. I'm on a shiatus, and. And, you know, I blame the game. I blame a lot of things. I still blame the game, of course. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to stop blaming the game. Come on. Uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, I, I blame how the Orc and Goblins get treated. It's not like an army that I want to play as much uh, just because uh, the rules aren't where I want them to be. But at the same time, um, it, it, it's extremely hard to make a competitive list. And if you don't believe me, you can just look at lists that are out there. You can just look at how Orcs and Goblins place in tournaments and don't tell me oh there was a top player on this team that did it yeah one player doesn't make the book okay one player doesn't make the book and unfortunately i felt like that happened to me the year before the year before i i played so well with um i kept on making that joke over and over and over again where i was like i was a good player last year <laughs> but um i felt like a lot of the tricks and, and things i created with orcs and goblins got nerfed and unfortunately you see that anything else that I didn't really play didn't really get nerfed um, so uh, you know hopefully this year since I didn't play that well and I didn't do so hot uh, maybe the books get uh, buffed up a bit who knows <laughs> I did this for, for every Eric and Goblin player out there remember that uh, anyways, MVP of this game is definitely Chigo. Chigo just fucking killed a shit ton of points with magic, and Chigo ended up taking out that spear block and holding up that that uh, Phoenix guard. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to deliver more damage uh, to get an auto break on his Phoenix guard, and he made a shit ton of his ward saves. He just rolled out of the box, and I never really say that. I really never say, you know, uh, the dice won it for the, my opponent, but the dice did win it for my opponent, you know, and it is a dice game. Um, um, but uh, MVP of the tournament is probably still Chigo. Um, I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, the Iron Orcs were solid. I really did like the Iron Orcs, especially against Ben's game, Ben Kerr. Um, and uh, the Chariots probably were the MVP from the Euron's game. Uh, Schweitzer's game, Chigo died really early on, blew himself up, so I can't really give it to the Chigo, man. Um, I really probably would give it still to the Iron Orcs. Iron Orcs were just kind of holding up. Uh, in Murphy's game, it was really just the Goblins that held. Uh, so, hmm. 
and my general. So it's kind of it was kind of a fair split on who who did what. Um, I should probably start taking down points again. Um, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, uh, next weekend is Corner Hammer. I'm going to be going to Corner Hammer uh, with uh, uh, Joel Flint, which is the guy who took the best uh, good army in this tournament, and uh, Robert Crespo from Miami. Uh, they're going to go ahead and stay with me, and uh, we're going to uh, be going to Corner Hammer together. Um, Corner Hammer is in my neck of the woods. It's actually in Schaumburg, Illinois, just outside of Sh Chicago. So uh, that's going to be fun. And uh, hopefully I'll see a bunch of you guys there. Uh, if not, I hope you guys enjoyed my videos. If you do, hit like, share, and subscribe. And I'm also going to put my Patreon link down below. If you guys want to help support me get to Serbia and uh, or help me get a camera, go ahead into my Patreon. And uh, any donation is vastly appreciated. Hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I enjoy making it. And I will be getting to you the next video as soon as I possibly can. Uh, which will probably be, oh, which will be the um, pre-Masters game I got against Aaron Chaum. All right, guys, I'll see you then. Till next time, take care and peace.